Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Theology Now and welcome to Lent 2021. Now the season of Lent is traditionally the time in the Christian calendar for preparation, that we are getting ready for Easter in a few weeks time and it is normally seen as a time when there is restraint or fasting or abstinence so that our appetites are cleansed in a way and that our faith is focused so that when we get to Easter we're really, you could say, in our best condition to really worship and embrace the full meaning of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. The root of the word Lent means to lengthen and it comes to us reflecting the time of year. So this is the time of year when the days are lengthening and so springtime is upon us. But I've also heard it used in the past times as being a season when we can lengthen our spiritual stride, when we're restraining our appetites and really focusing our faith so that we can walk with more clarity and more confidence and that our faith is established through the lengthening of our spiritual stride at this time of year. So what I want to do over the next few weeks leading us towards the Easter weekend is each week I'll upload just a short video and it will just highlight something of the events of the Passion of our Lord in the events from the Gospels moving towards Jerusalem and the crucifixion and the resurrection. One of the great signatures of the Gospel is that it is so counterintuitive. Amazing things happen but not in the way that we perhaps expect them to unfold. An example of this would be at the beginning of the Passion narrative in the events of Jesus moving into and toward Jerusalem ultimately to his death and resurrection. The first event in this procession is called the Triumphal Entry and that's perhaps a little bit ironically titled. For example, if you were a Jew of Jesus' day, you would have had what may be called a messianic anticipation. That you are expecting God to somehow deliver the people of Israel and break into world history in a brand new way through the exploits of Messiah. Now one of the key junctions in that event would have been the Messiah would appear at the temple and at the temple would call the nation to himself, would declare the arrival of the kingdom of God and would begin the conquest of all the enemies of Israel. So when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem with this great fanfare, he was riding on a small colt, we're told, and the people would have been putting their cloaks in front of him and their palm branches and crying out with the, the prophetic song, blessed is he who comes in the, in the name of the Lord. Some may have been thinking, maybe, maybe this is him. Some may be holding their breath, crossing their fingers, thinking maybe he's the one, maybe he's going to go up to the temple and he is going to, you know, sort of blow the trumpet, call the nation and begin the conquest. Well, Jesus does get up to the temple and as we put the different accounts of the Gospels together, it doesn't quite unfold the way they may have hoped it would have. Jesus gets to the temple, he, uh, he has a look around, he makes a few comments, and then he leaves. So, profoundly anticlimactic if you had been somebody of Jesus' day. Perhaps not the triumphal entry that you were really obviously hoping for. But because this is so counterintuitive, it calls us to think more carefully, think more deeply about what's really going on. You see, the gospel is not about a building. It's not about a great city. The gospel is about a person, about Jesus. And he is presented to us in the Gospels really as the new and living temple. In fact, he says at one point, if you break this temple down, it will be restored again in three days. Speaking of his own body, and we know that that's how the events unfold. And we also know that he didn't come to you know, blow the trumpet and begin a great conquest of violence. He came to gather the lost sheep, didn't he? And he came to begin a conquest of love of goodness, of mercy, of truth, of wisdom, and of the, the beauty of his own self-giving that is the event of Easter. So really the season of Lent calls us to consider these things and to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and to lengthen our spiritual stride and to realize that the very nature of the gospel, the nature of Jesus, calls us to examine again uh, the world in which we live and most especially how we live in this world. To not
try and conquer or conquest through strength and power, you know, and superiority or um, that ambition, but rather to follow our Lord in that sense of self-giving and humility, love, uh, goodness, that uh, servant-heartedness that is his signature. So over these next few weeks we're going to look a little bit more carefully and follow our Lord through these events that eventually lead us to Easter. So may you ponder these and lengthen your spiritual stride in the meantime and until next week, peace.